hello and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guest, oh my God, we're going to have fun. Today's guest is someone who's quickly becoming a great, great friend. I'm down here in the Emerald Coast with him. He's an incredible host. I'm actually staying in one of his homes. Nathan Abbott from the Abbott team, powered by EXP Realty. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and, and glad you're getting to see our beautiful Emerald Coast in, in live. You got to tell you something, you know, I've got a place down in Miami and, you know, and I haven't really explored Florida at all. You know, it's like, like everyone else, you've sort of done the normal spots. And then when you come here, I didn't even know you guys were an hour behind. That's how much I know about this place. And so I get here yesterday. You've been an amazing host. You mm -hmm. and your wife and I had a great time yesterday. You showed me around. It's such a beautiful place. So tell everyone about this undiscovered treasure. So uh, this area is called the Emerald Coast. It's uh, predominantly from Pensacola to Panama City Beach. Uh, I live in an area called Santa Rosa Beach. Uh, they call our area the Emerald Coast strictly because it has this beautiful emerald color and our beaches are made out of grounded quartz crystal. Uh, I don't know if there's anywhere else in the world that offers that. Uh, it's Chris, quartz crystal and limestone. It actually squeaks when you walk on it. Which you Dude, saw seriously, yesterday. I got to tell you something. Yesterday, it freaked me out. We were going on the beach and I'm like, wait, the sand is squeaking. And it was just, I've never had that experience before. <laughs> It's just it's such fine sand and um, just really feel that this area is being discovered on a, a national and a global level. And when people get here, just like yourself, they realize that they don't really quite, they can't quite grasp why they've never heard of this area before. We've always been a Southeast destination, mostly driving traffic, but now we're getting uh, exposed all over the country and uh, people are loving what we're seeing here. So you were telling me how many states are within driving distance of where we are now? I think it's close to 18 states. I know 15 for sure, uh, but we're all within a day's drive of that entire Southeast region from, you know, Texas to, uh, you know, uh, St. Louis area to all the way up to, uh, you know, North Carolina, Nashville, everywhere in between. So we, we have a lot of driving, driving traffic here. You know what? That's, that's insane to me. And I got to tell you something because everyone has like these preconceived notions, right? When you start sort of thinking about it's the panhandle of Florida, I got to tell you, it's one of the most beautiful places I've seen. And you were telling me a story of a client that you had recently that came in and was looking for a property and they kept upping their budget. And they ended up getting the most spectacular home. Tell me a little bit about that story because I love that story. Yeah, I think people were discovering this area for the first time. And when they find it, they, uh, they, they continue to realize that this is a place that they consider home. I think a lot of you know, what happened with COVID, people were looking for uh, new destinations. And uh, what they found is they just felt safe here. They felt uh, there was uh, abundance of beautiful nature. Yeah. Uh, and a place that they, uh, you know, decided to uh, make their own home. Um, and the fact that they can travel back and forth as needed. Uh, we have a lot more flights that come into our area now, made it make a lot of sense. And, and they're not the only ones. We're seeing it across the board. I think one of the big things that really made people start looking heavily at our area is the Wall Street Journal uh, last year uh, said that the Emerald Coast is the new crown jewel of Florida. It was a national article. Yeah. And it really grasped a lot of attention. And from there is when we really started seeing this higher level of wealth, uh, deciding like, hey, maybe we should check out the spot. It just ranked this way uh, in the national headlines. And we've never been there before. And, and, and once they get here, they're, they can't really get it out of their head. And now there's too many of us here, aren't there? <laughs> well, we, we, we welcome it. I mean, uh, you know, for being born and raised here, uh, we knew one day this would be a world-class vacation destination. And to see that coming into play, uh, here 20 years later in my career and, and, and 50 years from my, my family being in the business, we've been able to see that uh, coming, coming true and, 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 and for good reason. And so, you know, I want to touch on that. It's sort of like you're the third generation Abbott in the real estate business here. And so yes. tell me about that. Over 50 years, your family has been here and, and handling the real estate in this beautiful area. How is that? Tell me about that. You've got a legacy. 
Well, our area was originally uh, kind of founded from the military. Eglin Air Force Base is, has more land than any Air Force Base in the country, I believe. And my grandfather uh, retired here through the Air Force and uh, found this area, was just uh, amazed at the beauty here. I let my father and my uncle know about it. And uh, at the time, they were managing the only building in three counties with an elevator. So there was not very little development here. Uh, there was not really any police, no uh, this was all hunting and fishing land. Uh, I was born and raised in Fort Walton. Uh, my father and my uncle came down here in the 70s, and they uh, saw the same vision that my grandfather had. I uh, got a loan from the developer, again, at the building with the only elevator in town, and uh, got a $30,000 loan, put a, a desk in the lobby, and just uh, really believed in this area from the inception when a lot of people didn't. And uh, you've been able to watch that uh, throughout my career and, and, and you know, ultimately was the place that I wanted to be uh, in this business as well as introducing people to this area the right way. All right. So now your grandfather found this place. Well, not found it, but sort of like saw the vision of this place. And then your dad came in and your uncle and they saw the vision. So now your third generation, and I know that you have other family members that are part of your organization and others here in the area as well. So tell me now, how do you differentiate as the third generation and sort of now sell this place to a new audience? Well, I think our, our area, our, our industry in a whole has evolved substantially. Uh, the world of real estate today is very different than how it was back then. Uh, our family sold uh, that business in 98. My father did because he said that one day he knew he's going to have to use a computer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they grew their business. They sold it. And I, I feel that uh, we're having major transition again today in the technology space. Uh, but the 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 passion for this area was always consistent between those three generations. Uh, me being born here and getting to raise my own children here in a way that I was raised and to have them really appreciate uh, the nature that's here. Uh, I really feel this area becomes a healing place. Uh, most of the people that uh, are introduced to this area were came from somewhere else. Uh, I'd say about 80%, 90% of the people that are coming here came from somewhere else. And uh, I love being that true native connection to people that can introduce this area to in a way that a lot of people can't. Um, and really, you know, just the hospitality we have here. We have wonderful Southern hospitality. We have great restaurants and the small community feel, even though we have millions of visitors a year, we still have the small kind of Caribbean style um, beach life. Um, and that's really the, the beauty that keeps people coming back. All my friends left to find their, slate pace, their place in the world. And every one of them are coming back to, to be here on this coast. So well, I can uh, see why. Yes. So now, now the whole world is going to be discovering this place because um, you and your sister are actually been approached to do a television show about this place. And I know that you can't give me too many details, but tell me how that actually came about because that's fascinating to me. Yeah, so we, um, uh, fortunately, our company um, made Inc. 5000 list the second consecutive year, and uh, they interviewed a lot of people um, that had that award, and we're trying to find a place to write an educational series on, and uh, one of their, their co-hosts uh, actually had a vacation down here, so I think that really hit home of how much they loved it. They came here for the first time. And uh, we're going to be doing a story uh, called The Emerald Coast, A Healing Place. And we're going to be the native connection. It's going to be uh, me, my sister, and one of our business partners, TJ Martin. And uh, just really excited to share this area in a global space. I think it's going to supposedly supposed to hit about 60 million viewers over the course of a year from all over uh, the country and the globe. So we're really excited about uh, being that introduction uh, to uh, new people to this coast for the first So this will be your precursor because this podcast is distributed in 90 countries. So we'll get your precursor going. By the time your show comes on, I won't be able to get back into your into your condo here. You'll be bored. Sure you will. I will always find space for friends. And, uh, you know, again, just honored to have you here. The experience that, that you're having here is what I what I hope for, for anyone we introduce. And, you know, having you... Uh, be so open to checking out my hometown really means a lot uh, to our family and and to what this area is all about. Oh my God, no, it is it it is a treasure. It is so beautiful. So now talk to me 
about your team because you built a great team. How many people do you have on your team now? Uh, we have right at 40 people uh, right now. We, uh, as of November of last year, we had 12. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. That's incredible. So you've more than tripled your size of your team. Tell me about that. Tell me how, how you built and tripled your team in a year during a pandemic. And sure. then I have a follow-up question to that. How'd you sure. do it? So I, um, I launched my independent brokerage. Uh, it was my family dream to relaunch uh, our, our, our family's company. It's called Abbott Realty Services. I was uh, a team for about 18 years with my previous brokerage, who I still very much love today, but wanted to take that leap of faith. I, I did that. Uh, we did. Um, I, I launched February 2020, literally right before COVID. Wow. I rebranded my business, uh, started realizing that um, my customers didn't really know the difference of me being a team or being independent. Um, that's when I started opening my mind a little bit more because sometimes that leap of what you thought you wanted becomes a little bit more painful. And even though we we're growing, I just became, had all these administrative things with the state. I had yes. different layers of liability from being the broker owner. And I just started broadening my horizons. And I really felt when the whole COVID thing happened, I, I think all of us dug really deep about how do we become relevant in our marketplace? And I, I still don't remember what the podcast was, but I remember hearing a lady speak and she says, if you're not connected to uh, global tech business, uh, you're going to be, you're going to fall in relevancy over the years. And how connected are you? And so I started looking at our business and I said, we well, you know we were connected in a lot of ways of how we were using technology, but I was never a part of something much bigger on that scale. That's when EXP came into my attention from the people that I really trusted. Um, really great friend of mine, John Mikish, um, actually talked me out of it and then talked me into it a year later because he also joined and, and I trusted him and we came on board. And I think what that did is it just really removed the fear of growth. I think a lot of times when you're trying to grow, there's a lot of fear with that. You're like, you don't want to grow too fast, but you don't want to keep it too small. And by being a member of something that was much bigger than myself and having a ownership stake and that growth uh, really took the fear away. Uh, it encouraged our agents to also um, speak to people about this opportunity. And it just grew naturally. We did not do any external uh, recruiting. It was all from within. It was people that had a friend or a good relationship or someone that we had that conversation with who ended up joining our team. So it really happened organically and it happened a lot quicker than we would have ever uh, expected. Uh, through that process, uh, our business uh, is over doubled in production. Our agent count has tripled and the newer agents that have came on, they're also starting to really grow in this space as well. So we're excited about what the future holds for sure. And you're getting a lot of buzz on eXp. You know, I'm here because I'm speaking at your event and you've got a couple of hundred people here coming tomorrow for the event and it's going yes. to be pretty amazing. And you've sort of really rolled out the red carpet here. But tell me how EXP and how you got started with EXP and how that all came about and how that growth has continued for you. Well, I, I feel that this company just has, you can very quickly build a lot of influential relationships in your life. I've told people, you know, my, my father's been a most incredible mentor to me, still is today. Uh, but I wanted to be in a space where I could be the dumbest one in the room. I always search for that. I've been going to masterminds my entire career. And I immediately, when joining EXP, realized this was something different. And the level of sharing was on another level. When everyone has an ownership stake in a business, the ego disappears. The relationships become stronger, quicker. Everyone's not talking about how great they are. They're talking about how they can make other people better and how they can share and that was really inspiring to me. And, um, you know, from when we met at Cabo uh, briefly um, and to be able to, you know, further those conversations in Dallas, it's just a, a, a true example is if, it doesn't matter where someone's in their career path. And I mean, gosh, the, what you've done, Michael, is incredible. But just to be real and be approachable and not being able to, you know, play some front to try to impress someone, uh, just let your guard down and be who you are. And you'll be amazed at how many people are willing to, share their life with you, uh, build new friendships, and, yeah. um, and then just watching the EXP events. You know, those were just such a fun event. There was just so much great content there. 
Um, and I've always enjoyed throwing parties and events. I'm, I'm sure my, my parents remember several that I threw when they were out of town uh, when I was younger, but they, we always had a, a pretty great and fun event. And so I really wanted to do that in the business sense where it wasn't just the stuffy um, event where all we talked about was, you know, kind of boring stuff. I wanted it to be something that they could be around uh, influence of other people and to see that level of sharing. And that's what really what we're giving back to this community at our breakthrough conference that we're about to throw is, um, and it's sold out, which I'm excited about. Yeah, um, but just to be able to share what you've seen, Michael, to share other speakers that are coming to have fun. Um, life, life is about having fun. And I think what attracted me most to EXP in the beginning is that, you know, life is short and you can be very busy and you can be very successful, but if you don't, can't share that with others, uh, you kind of fall short in that path. And when I saw the EXP slogan was uh, real, making real estate fun again. Yes. Real estate can really burn you out over the years. And it has really just revitalized my passion for this business. The relationships that I have are, you know, expanding my mind and making my dreams bigger. And uh, it's just so awesome to, to build so many amazing relationships in a, such a short time through this organization. And that's what it's about for everyone. I got to tell you something. There's always that sense of family here. And, yes. you know, and that's such an overused statement and it's sort of like, but it is so true with this organization. And I don't, you know, I, I still can't put my finger on it, but there's a sense of community and belonging. And, you know, we're the largest independent real estate company in the business. And when you start sort of thinking about that, the fact that we're just shy of 70,000 agents across the globe, and it's a sense that everyone is family and you really feel that. It's yes. something that is inexplicable because it doesn't really communicate well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I, I, we've always been a family-based business within my own business on a much smaller scale. Yeah. And to see it on such a magnitude of this level and the pace that it's growing and to feel that vibe from everyone you talk to, it's really something special. I think it comes down to we're becoming wiser as real estate agents to realize that we're not doing this together. You're ultimately alone. Oh my and, God, yes. And, and this company has really created a level of connection that truly is, that truly means something. I mean, that, that really is, is what moves me more than the money. Uh, the money is a good byproduct of great relationships, but the relationship piece of this is what has really made me so passionate about this business again. I love that. So tell me in your career and now your 50 year career with the family, What's the greatest lesson you've learned in your career? Uh, to, to have humility and to, and to the minute that you realize that you think you know it all, you're, you've lost. Um, you know, really, and just to be there for people because that's what you can take with you. Uh, you can't take the money with you and you can't leave a legacy based off being difficult with people. Um, you know, you really have to have a heart that's about serving and, and pushing things forward. So I really think that the main thing is just, you know, make it about what your legacy intends to be versus just the immediate. I love that. And you know what? It was yesterday walking around with you. You can sort of see that you were raised here and you can also see that everyone comes up to you and has such warmth when they greet you. And that really says a lot about you. And it was just something that, you know, when we were just walking around in different places mm -hmm. and it was beautiful to see that. And that humility shines through with you and your family. It really is beautiful. I think what you get in return, what you put out to other people. And so our, our, my most proud thing is the fact that we can take a group of even 40, that's part of a much bigger group, but to see that um, our relationship is so much deeper than a transaction. I mean, they are my extended family. I spend more time with them than even my own. Uh, immediate family at times and uh, you know I want our organization to be a part of that when someone joins it it makes them better and multiple layers not just selling real estate and to know that we have their back and that's the culture that we're building and you know I, I feel that if you do cutthroat tactics at times you, you get that in return we try to treat agents like they're our absolute best customer we try to treat the especially the local vendors in this area that yes uh, there, there are amazing customers as well, and we just want to, you know, spread positive vibes to, and in return, you get those of get positive vibes if you're putting that out in the atmosphere. I love that. I love that. Give me three pieces of advice that you would give somebody entering the business today 
the business is so crazy right now, right? We're in a hot seller's market. The market is transitional. Mm -hmm. People that are in this business that have entered the business in the last five years plus don't know a down market. What would be three pieces yeah, of advice think, you would give somebody? I think number one is to be adaptable. You know, there, you get, so many people get stuck in doing the same thing and they're not willing to adapt. Uh, and so they realize that they should have. Uh, I feel never give up. You know, sometimes people get out of this industry right when they're about to make it, but they don't give it enough time to make it to that next step because they give up their ambition, their drive. And to realize, you know, how matter how crappy the day is before, the new day is a new day to create greatness. And if you can start off that, that morning with like, you know, I'm going to put this behind me. Today I'm going to wake up and I'm going to make some, a lot of amazing stuff happen because I'm driven to make that happen. Uh, those are really the three things I think that can keep you uh, relevant in this business and moving forward and finding success. I'm going to call you when I get a down day, Nathan. <laughs> I'll be here for you, man. But likewise, I, I I think I think when you know when you let your guard down, everyone has the same stresses, the same tears, right. the same things, and if, and you know if you're not willing to share that with others and be transparent, you're not going to get that transparency in return. I mean, our team really started changing when I just said that. Uh, you know, guys, like I, I can't be the one alone that helps influence you to do better if we're not doing that for each other, because my influence comes from them. And yes. that's what I think a lot of people don't look at leadership, like leadership influence doesn't come from, they're just an influential person all the time. It's because they get influenced by the people that they're leading that helps them become a better leader. And um, just being, you know, being open to that and sharing that with others. I think people open up a lot more to you in return. It is so true, you know, and um, so I have, I have a question for you. So, you know, I asked this question of a lot of my guests and I know that you have, your son is 10? Yes. So I actually sort of asked this question. What would you say to your 10 year old self? And now you have a 10 year old son. So what would you say to a 10 year old Nathan with the lens that you have of knowledge now? What piece of advice would you, you give your 10 year old self with what you know today? Don't try to be someone for someone else if you can't find the realness internally to be the best version that you know how to be and be confident about who that person is. Damn, have you thought about this question? That was I damn good. That's just something that I, I face. You know, I think a lot of times when people see uh, success, and unfortunately our family did find that, they don't see the sacrifice there. They don't see the clouded relationships that occur. I mean, I, I had a lot of challenges as a child to really find who I was. And um, it took me, I hiked 130 miles through Wyoming at, at 17 years old. And I really just realized that um, to appreciate the simple things in life and to appreciate, you know, a level of realness and, and my entire world changed on that trip, because if you can't keep it real, what are you really trying to be? Uh, fake? I mean, that's the alternative. And so um, not being afraid of stepping into new things, if that's what you really want to do and being confident in that space and being confident uh, and making sure people see the real you versus someone you're pretending to be. You know, I got to tell you, brother, it's sort of like your authenticity is so beautiful because it just permeates and it's like, and it's all around you. It's the people who are surround you. It's your family. It's, it's really just beautiful to be around. And it's, it's really, it's really cool. You've got such a great spirit, brother. So I got a final question for you. Okay. And this is, uh, this is one of those that always sort of like gets people sort of thinking. So in your book of life, what's this chapter called? Freedom. Ooh, why? Uh, just thinking bigger and um, in a way that I can, you know, not only work towards freedom for myself, but to create a good path for my children. And, uh, you know, I'm 44. Uh, I feel that, um, you know, at times we just can be in the grind forever, you know, and uh, I want to create amazing things for people that I love and, and uh, you know, just realize that, you know, that freedom is not necessarily being free from work, but being uh, free from pressure. Yeah. By breaking through some barriers that allows you to expand and just have 
uh, opportunities that allow other people to grow and, and do it in the place that comes from the heart. So I'm not a, you know, I, I feel that in real estate, you know, there's a lot of people that are 70 years old still trying to sell a home. And That's right. my, my, my vision is much bigger than that at this point. I want to create a, uh, a show people a better way uh, that is opening for our industry um, to find a better freedom for their life and their, their families and to be able to move forward in a bigger space than just selling real estate alone. I love that. Nathan Abbott, brother, thank you so much, man. I got to tell you, it's sort of like, you know, we, we've only met recently, but it's yeah. been such a, like a, a strong and, and, and very quick friendship. And it is something that I am treasuring and I am so looking forward to being here to support your event and your success and your continued growth. And really thank you for the hospitality. Thank you for who you are, your leadership that you're doing in your team, in your family and the man that you are and the example that you are. It really is a pleasure to know you. It's, it's likewise. I mean, the reason why we had that conversation to begin with is because you really inspired me and, and uh, I wasn't afraid to directly uh, approach you in that space. I, I want to surround myself around influential and inspiring people. And when you're not afraid to, to walk up to make that connection, you know what, sometimes you may get rejected, but if you don't give that opportunity to put your foot into that space, you're never going to have that opportunity. And uh, I just appreciate you for being uh, humble and, and actually, you know, caring about uh, what we have going on here on the Emerald Coast and, and myself, and uh, we'll be friends uh, forever. I, and I we will. Like amazing connection, and that will continue to grow, and I'm excited to see what the future holds, uh, being a part of this amazing company. Me too. So thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. And thank you all of you for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Mm -hmm.